H2K Infosys provides world-class online IT training, staffing and software testing solutions to customers worldwide. H2K Infosys supports 100% job-oriented training, hands-on project work, cloud test lab, resume preparation and review, mock interviews, robust syllabus. One-time pay, lifetime access to live classes and videos. H2K Infosys has won the trust of thousands of students worldwide. For free demo class, visit h2kinfosys.com. Okay, so day before yesterday, what are the things we have discussed is, let's have a recap on a very high level, what are the topics we have covered, okay, so the first one is, how to design How to design our cluster and how big it should be, right? Based on the incoming data, we will be planning our cluster size and we had seen an example for that as well. And the second one is, what are the hardware? Right. These are the high level things we have discussed, right? How we have to design few admin commands, what type of operating systems we can use to install Hadoop and how to add a new node or delete a new node. What are the things that we have to keep in mind while uh, adding a new node because we have to do some cluster balancing and few commands are there to balance this cluster as well, right? So let's talk about what are the uh, types of modes that we can install Hadoop today okay and also a few important configuration sites so once you get to know about these configuration sites tomorrow we can discuss on the actual installation process okay so this is the first one Hadoop can be installed and run in three different ways Okay, there are different ways to install Hadoop and use it because it can be used for a single mission or number of missions as well, right? So we have different modes of installation to run it on different number of missions. So the first one is local job runner mode. So we will discuss about that in the next slide, okay? And the second one is pseudo distributed mode. And the last one, which is a very important one and which is used in most of the companies is distributed mode. So that is how the beauty of Hadoop comes with, right? So distribution is the main important thing. Let's see the first one, which is local job runner mode. 
what it says is runs on the local file system and not on HDFS. So earlier when Hadoop was installed, they doesn't have a uh, storage for themselves. In the sense, they use it to use the local file system of that operating system itself, so that they doesn't maintain any database, something different for Hadoop. So it is like our MapReduce program use it to run as a simple common Java program. Just they use it to follow the structure or strategy to run a MapReduce program. But it looks like a common Java program, but it doesn't, it doesn't actually follow the distribution of the data or accessing the data from different locations. So it's like a regular Java program. So that's what it's saying. No Hadoop processes are required to run. So actually we have different processes, right? In the sense, different demons that would be running whenever we install Hadoop and start running any program. So in jo local job runner mode, no Hadoop process. Everything used to run in a single one JVM. That's what it is saying again. Everything runs on a single JVM. So if at all, if you go in login into your Hadoop systems and it's being installed in local job runner more you cannot see all the services running like name node secondary name node job tracker data node and task tracker so for example if one goes down everything will goes down because everything is interdependent ideal for MapReduce programs during development phase because it doesn't need to fetch any particular information from different areas so that is where just to test our MapReduce program which is designed in the way Hadoop programs need to be it will be good only for that purpose but it will not give you the actual purpose of Hadoop like getting the data from different areas or processing in multi uh, threaded way does run with certain limitations like only one reducer can specify it so don't worry about this uh, I will let you know like what is a reducer and what what the function of it, how many reducers we can use and what is the reason of having multiple reducers and all those things. But as of now, remember like in local job runner mode, we will be able to use only one reducer in our MapReduce programs. Okay, the next one is pseudo distributed mode. So this is the important, one of the important modes that we would be discussing about and even tomorrow we will be installing Hadoop in pseudo distributed mode okay the most that is currently used by us not only by us even if you go to companies and have a look they would be using a pseudo distributed mode for their uh, test environments and all those things or develop at environments only in production they use it to have some other mode but for their development environments and uh, the areas where they use it to write MapReduce programs is on pseudo distributed mode only. So what it happens exactly here is each daemon like name node, data node, etc. runs in its own JVM. Basically each daemon runs independently. So let's see uh, what is a JVM. Uh, we all know I think uh, hopefully we all know like what is a JVM. It's like a Java virtual machine. So every process will run under a Java particular Java virtual machines in the sense all were not interrelated so everything is independent so for example if one process goes down there is no rule or nothing uh, set up like another process also needs to go down so this is where we are going to install through our VM simulates the real Hadoop cluster on a single physical machine because as we are going to install Hadoop on a single physical machine we need to run everything on its own in the sense all the processes need to be run on its own so that's the reason we are using pseudo distributed mode uses HDFS for storing the data so here we will be driving the data or we will be loading the data into our HDFS from our local file system and then we will be using uh, these paths in our MapReduce programs perfect for developing and testing apps before launching into cluster so before actually uh, loading into our distributed more or our multi node clusters whatever the programs we are deploying we use it to first develop in this mode test if everything goes well and running well in this mode and then only we will deploy in our production environments in a different distributed mode.
okay so the last one is distributed mode the mode for which hadoop was really made so no clashes or nothing no dependency on each of things everything runs on its own jvm and multiple threads can be executed at the same time so completely distributed in the real world hadoop clusters data node and task trackers run on a single mode and all the remaining processes will run on independent nodes in the sense independent machines in real world hadoop clusters name node secondary name node and job trackers run on dedicated machines so if you take a distributed mode this is how the cluster looks like So this is how the machines look like in distributed mode. So whatever we had discussed in our first classes of HDFS is of distributed mode only. If you take uh, pseudo mode, everything, all the process will run on a single machine. So machine 1 will contain name node, secondary name node, job tracker, task tracker and data node. So all the five processes will run on a single machine. And But you will be able to see that all these five processes are running and everything is independent to each other but if you take a local machine in the sense local mode you will not be able to see that all these processes are running or not and if one particular process goes down everything will goes down okay so let's come to few configuration sites in a Hadoop cluster, complete Hadoop package is typically installed on each machine. So if you take a distributed mode where we have set of machines, suppose again if we consider the same thing, here we have 100 machines. So what we will do in distributed mode is we will install Hadoop on each of the machine. So on 100 machines we will be installing Hadoop in a pseudo distributed mode or somewhere so such that both all the hundred machines will act together and they will work as a distributed mode each node has its own set of configuration parameters suppose suppose think like there were some 10 to 20 configurations that needs to be done on each of the Hadoop installation so each machine will have its own set of configuration so this machine may have configurations as conf1 I'm just mentioning the name as conf1 there is nothing like conf1 I'm just trying to let you know like the configurations would be different most of the times it would be same but maybe sometimes for name nodes and secondary name nodes and job trackers the configurations might be different and the configurations would be same for all the remaining machines so that is how it happens it looks in this way most configurations are similar across the nester so all the data nodes will generally follow the same configuration the name node might have a different slight different configuration or an extra configuration that would be set up for name node 
all the important configuration files are present in Hadoop configuration directories. So there is a particular directory uh, which will be created by default when we install Hadoop and all the configurations will go and sit into that directory. Typically configuration files are present in configuration directory. So, so the directory name would be conf. So once you install Hadoop you can go and see into this directory like what are the different files that were available and what is the setting that we have. But it's not much important for uh, a developer point of view but if you are trying to become an admin or something you can deep dive into these things as well. So most important configuration files or that you will ever play with are coresite.xml that is the first configuration file and the second one is HDFS site.xml and the last one is mapred site.xml. So all the configurations will generally be written in XML files only. So XML files means they will follow a particular format or they will follow a particular script. So we have to write all these configurations if at all uh, in a tagline if at all I want to include any new configurations because by default you will have something but if I if I want to give some new configuration then I need to write it in XML format only. So let's see what it contains. The first one is coresite.xml. So as the name indicates all the core configurations will be available in this particular XML. So for example uh, I want to give like I want to keep or change something related to my uh, master node IP address for example there is a particular IP address that we are connecting for the master node now I want to change that IP address to some address which I want to connect so the master node is common for everything right HDFS will talk with master nodes MapReduce would have a communication with master nodes so the master node is like a common thing for our Hadoop configuration itself so that's the reason it's placed in core site.xml so again if you take the HDFS site.xml it is completely particular about HDFS configurations only so whatever the configurations I want to give regarding HDFS may be the block size. Uh, as we all know the default block size is 64 MB right. Now I want to change that block size. So what is the site that I would be looking for is HDFS site.xml because it is a site which will maintain all the configurations related to HDFS. Maybe the refl replication factor or a few other things where HDFS will be taken care of right. So all those type of information we will be seeing in HDFS site.xml. The last one is mapped site.xml. So you should be answering it now like what I will contain in my mapped site.xml. Just by looking the name you can tell me. Guys come on. Say something. Right. So all the MapReduce related things will be given in this mapred site.xml. So suppose I want to change the IP address of my job tracker. So definitely job trackers and task trackers will be related or they were the, they are connected to MapReduce configurations only. So I will have those configurations in my mapred site.xml. So these are the three main XMLs that we will be discussing on. There are few other things also but tomorrow I will be explaining them while I explain you the installation modes. I mean in the in installation process. So this is how you would see like as I told you everything will be in XML format right. Uh, if you see or compare the core site.xml and HDFS site.xml, this is how it would look like. So uh, the first one is the version number which you are using right now and the next one is just the name of that particular site and then every property will be included in two tags called as configuration and property. So whatever you want to declare, you have to declare inside a configuration tag and then a property tag should be given. So if you see here a sample HDFS site.xml is given where I am giving the replication factor. I am trying to declare my replication factors here. 
So by default it would be 3 but if at all I want to change my replication factor to 1 this is how I have to give in my hdfsi.xml.